This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring retired FBI Special Agent Jennifer Coffindaffer. Karen Reed's trial is getting started and it is already been a circus. Joining me to discuss the woman who was there this last week, Jennifer Coffindaff, a retired FBI special agent. Uh, I'm just going to open it up right there. How was the field trip <laughs> to the land of Karen Reed? <laughs> well, I will say this. I, I learned an awful lot. It was very uh, interesting to me to go to the crime scene to really see uh, the vantage point of people, what they could and could not have seen from exiting that middle door, mm -hmm. which it would be completely blocked to the right side, and then where the cars park, just the whole uh, how that is laid out and what could and couldn't be seen, mm -hmm. how the body would be hit and could be propelled to where it was found, which by the way wasn't 12 feet uh, off the a side of the road it was 12 feet from the road so in any event it was just really good uh it was good to talk to the fanatical some of the fanatical uh followers mm -hmm. and get a true understanding of how somebody that would otherwise possibly be viewed as somewhat normal could be caught up in this uh really insanity mm -hmm. you know giving twenty thousand dollars to a cause for a stranger they don't even know in terms of donations and travel expenses to make sure they're there for every minute um it's a uh, it's very very uh interesting it was good to go to the bars mm -hmm. that they went to I, just quaint what canton is a wonderful mm -hmm. wonderful sweet little town um you know just middle class just a wonderful place and yeah. it's terrible that something like this took place sure. it's still there's definitely people on both sides mm -hmm. you know i talked with a lot of individuals just wanting to get their takes and uh, that was very interesting. I think the best part of it for me, though, was talking with the people who love John O'Keefe mm -hmm. and meeting them. And it's it was palpable, Tony, the pain yeah, and um, the circus that they just try to look the other way at. Um, yeah. It's really hard for them. That, that's got to be incredibly difficult. I mean, we're talking about the death of, of a very beloved man uh, in a circumstance that was likely an accident of some sort that took place. It, why, now that you've been there and you've had a chance to talk to both sides one-on-one, -on -one, why is this? What, what, is it, what is it about this case that has created this this firestorm, this passion that that, like you said, people who otherwise would be you know considered normal uh, are so fired up about. It. I mean, it almost like reminds me of of politics to a certain extent, and people getting really fired up about one side or another. This is not that. This is this is a a, a murder case uh, or or an accidental death case. Uh, it, it's it, it's just it's it's crazy. I think to some of us on the outside watching this, going. Why? Why are people so, so fired up about this? And why do they think that that their voice really matters in this? It's going to be decided in a courtroom. It's not going to be decided on the streets outside, uh, you know, if you're wearing this color or that color. Well, you perfectly made a great analogy, Tony, with the political. Almost the climate just feels like that. People who hate Trump, you know, mm -hmm. people who love Trump, right? Yeah. It's polarizing. Mm -hmm. And this is the same sort of feel you get from the whole situation. But I will tell you uh, that at the crux, I think I finally got to the crux of it. Okay. And the crux is that you have a community um, and a, a large extended community, too, uh, stretching as far as I went as far as Cape Cod. Mm -hmm. And these individuals um, really believe there is severe public corruption at all levels okay. in Canton, in and around Canton. Okay, And really how I see this is kind of like in the OJ trial mm -hmm. where people were upset about Rodney King and how he was treated, that yeah. that was kind of the underlying reason for the fanaticism mm -hmm. over that. It's kind of the same thing. Everybody is so upset about public corruption and they feel like this, their huckleberry, this is their 
case that they're going to prove public corruption. Okay. And and what it's done to their so that's really the underlying issue. That makes I more think. sense. I and mean, this is their case for it. Okay. Well, I mean that 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 helps it make a lot more sense. Uh, it, it's like this is the catalyst then for bringing that to light in their mind. This is, I mean, if it was some other case, it would be some other case. Just happens to be this, I'm guessing, that they feel this is a great example of where they feel they can show what that corruption is if, if in fact, it is actually going on. It, it had to be something more than just Karen Reed, I would think, and, and that, that does answer that. Sick of the ads? We opt to. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.